David Cameron has been wielding the big stick today, telling his MPs to start paying money back to the taxpayer after yet more revelations that Tory MPs have used their expense claims to fund lavish lifestyles in the country. The Tory leader said it was time for politicians to start setting an example. We'll have more on those claims in a moment. Everything from swimming pools to chandeliers. But first, Laura Koonsberg on a parliament reeling from the expenses fiasco. It must take a fair amount of money to look after a big house in the country, especially if you have a pool that needs cleaning or paddocks that need to be rolled. Day five of the expenses saga began with the details of what some Tories have been spending on their second homes. The upkeep of a manor that dates back several centuries can be a real drain on the bank account. The former Tory minister, Douglas Hogg, has defended his claim of £14,500 towards his housekeeper's wages. I agree with the fees office that a proportion of the maintenance and cleaning of my house, hence the housekeeper, should be on the parliamentary alert. That was claimed in detail and in writing and in advance with the fees office for the very simple reason the house is otherwise unoccupied. He didn't break the rules and neither did David Cameron who himself claimed for wisteria to be cleared from his Cotswold home. He'll repay that money and this afternoon he told the senior members of his team to get out their cheque-books too. Several of the shadow cabinet will pay back thousands they received and all Tory MPs will be subject to a new regime. It's about trying to say to people, we understand the concern, we understand the anger, we're not just going to blame the system, we're not just going to say we obeyed the rules, we're actually going to dig back down and say, right, what can we do to make some down payments to make this right? In future, Tory MPs will only be able to claim for the rent and bills or the mortgage on their second home, not furniture or food. Flipping, where MPs change what they describe as their first home and their second to make the most of their expenses, will be banned. And especially expensive past claims will be reviewed and potentially repaid. Once whispers went through Westminster of the Conservatives' idea, the government appeared to scramble a plan of its own. The leader of the House popped up and said some past claims will be looked at and if any of them are found to have been approved by mistake, it could be payback time for all. Everybody wants to make sure that if money's been paid out uh, wrongly, that it should be paid back. And everybody wants to make sure that if the rules need to be clearer, which they do about the nomination of second homes, that that action is taken now. Many MPs are embarrassed, many irritated with each other for their behaviour and many are furious with the Speaker, who's meant to be the Commons figurehead. But it's far from clear if a bout of parliamentary payback will soothe the public's anger. Laura Kunzberg, BBC News, Westminster. From mowers to manure, just when we thought we'd heard it all, the latest details reveal the extent to which parliamentary expenses helped some MPs to fund a lifestyle many taxpayers could only dream of. Our correspondent Robert Hall has taken to the air to get a bird's eye view of two Conservatives and their country homes. The route to the Conservative heartlands, over the last suburban streets, out across the rolling green of the Shire counties. Our first destination was rural Hampshire, home to James Arbuthnot, chairman of the Defence Select Committee. Around his home, neatly kept gardens and a swimming pool awaiting warmer weather. Mr Arbuthnot reportedly claimed over £1,400 for the maintenance of both. He says he will repay the costs which apply to the pool. He's also said to have claimed more than £2,400 for a housekeeper. From Hampshire we headed northwest towards the Malvern Hills and the constituency of the most senior Tory backbencher. Once a minister in Margaret Thatcher's government, Sir Michael Spicer's home stands in the heart of a pretty Worcestershire village. He is said to have claimed £4,000 of council tax for the house and the adjoining cottage, more than £5,500 for gardening and over £600 for the installation of a chandelier and rewiring of his home. According to the Daily Telegraph, in December 2006, Sir Michael submitted a detailed invoice which included hedge-cutting helipad. We won't be landing there today. Last night, Sir Michael said references to a helipad were simply a family joke. We did land nearby to put specific claims to Sir Michael. He's insisted that it was perfectly proper to claim maintenance costs, adding that the chandelier was, in fact, a modest light fitting. Today, he wasn't at home to explain further, so we sought the views of constituents in the nearby town of Pershaw. Just wondered 
what your thoughts were when you see the list yeah, there. Absolutely appalling that they can do that, yeah? It's really bad. To be quite honest, it makes me angry because I'm, um, I'm a carer for my son who's disabled and we live on the bare essentials, you know? Well, if you want my frank opinion, I think it's disgusting. Doesn't matter which party it is, they're all as bad as one another. Disillusion which will be spread by further revelations, fueling fears that claims made by a minority of MPs have done lasting damage. Robert Hall, BBC News, Worcestershire. Let's join our political editor now, Nick Robinson. Nick, some drastic action from David Cameron, but he was dealing with some pretty exceptional claims, as we've seen. He certainly was. There's nothing like the whiff, or should that be the stench of scandal, George, to concentrate the minds of our political leaders. Things that seemed unthinkable just a few weeks ago became unavoidable. As you say, the Tory leader faced the choice, really, of headlines tonight about moats and manure, or headlines about payback time, or a threat to kick people out of his party. He chose the latter. He's imposed some discipline on his party, and he'll feel pretty smug about it, because after all, Gordon Brown tried to impose a solution just a few weeks ago and ended up being mocked from within his own cabinet for that grin on YouTube. And that tonight, the Labour Party are really, frankly, struggling to catch up, saying me too to these proposals, and yes, we'd like to go a bit further and do exactly the same thing for Parliament as a whole, but in a more independent way. So in which case, where does that leave Gordon Brown and the other parties, frankly? Are they on the back foot now? Oh, there's no doubt they're on the back foot, but of course that means that we will have seen real change in recent weeks that we could never previously have conceived for. The Prime Minister will get some credit for some of that, Cameron will get other credit, and there will be the sort of change that wasn't previously thought to be possible. This has turned, though, George, this whole saga into what I would describe as a political game-changer. There are ministers and shadow ministers who have been hugely embarrassed by having their expenses published, whose careers may never be the same. There are some who have not had their expenses causing embarrassment who may find that they're on the rise. But remember, it is always the people who have the final say. And David Cameron will know this tonight, that a former party chairman, Norman Tebbit, invited voters to vote for none of the main parties, to boycott them all, to send a signal of their outrage. If they do, the Tories won't be feeling any happier than Labour just now. All right, Nick, thank you. Unemployment is rising faster than at any time in the last 30 years. The latest figures show